Alright, hey guys, welcome back to this episode of Dark Hawk Talk. Today we're going to be going over issue number seven. Well, we're going to start off here uh, in classic Dark Hawk fashion, uh, swooping in during the middle of the day. Drug deal, he's talking like Rorschach in here, about to be busted from on high. And you see this kid down here, he looks like way too young to be at a drug deal, but whatever. So Dark Hawk's going to go in there and give him what for? All right, so Dark Hawk swoops in with a shram, a skoom, and an ugh, and uh, busts up the drug deal. Hear this, slugs. I hereby declare Midtown High School in vicinity a drug-free zone with a crunch there on the gun. So drug dealers get the message. This cable is super long there. I don't remember it ever being that long, but whatever. Um, so uh, he busts up the drug dealers, but the uh, bus does not go unnoticed. Uh, the Dark Hawk, I've actually read him. Uh, you'll recognize headset here. We'll we'll see him a little bit later on. Um, actually see him in action while listening to the Branded Berg Concertos. It's as sublime as an uh, experience as Steve Rubino has ever had. There's so many references in there I don't understand. Uh, but I think it's just to show that this dude's a nerd, if you can't tell. He's a stereotypical 90s nerd there. Uh, anyways, Dark Hogs, I'll let you live today. Now get out of here and don't ever come back. Uh, yeah, this is what superior guys do. If they don't kill him, uh, it, uh, hold him for the cops and all that. He's basically just trying to figure out what to do here. So a moment of self-reflection figures out what to do with quote-unquote lowlights like them. Kill him like the Punisher. I've met some characters who need killing. Uh, probably in reference to Philip Basin and uh, who that, but he's basically just trying to figure out whether or not he's going to be the type of, uh, you know, the regular hero that saves the guy or the anti-hero who uh, can kill him. And uh, he realizes, oh, he reverts back to Chris Powell. And he's like, man, there's still so much I don't know about the Dark Hawk ever since I looked under that helmet in reference to his uh, fucking ugly face that's underneath there. Uh, he's been afraid to find any more, but soon I'm going to have to. My life could depend on it right now. All I want to think about is lunch and some last minute homework for this afternoon. So uh, he's doing his homework in the, I guess the tool shed or something like that. I don't know, or the garage. I don't know. But here his brothers come, Jonathan Jason, come up, tackle him, take his amulet, complete with Spider-Man shirt on there. Uh, you know, ever since he found that thing at the funhouse, he hasn't taken it off. Chris is pissed, you little rats. Uh, we can have it back. Chris, he's my favorite uh, name for a friend here, old chum for $5. And then Chris barrels through and just crashes into a bar stool and uh, takes back and uh, they start uh, start insulting him. Um, anyways, Jason, Jonathan, they're worried about the mom. She's been weird. I think there's anything we can do for her, like maybe buy her some flowers, cook her breakfast. Uh, and Jace, or, uh, Jonathan in here with the real talk. You idiot. She's undergone a severe emotional trauma and a hot meal won't have me curative. <laughs> anyways, that's funny. All right, so they call him back up to his, uh, oh, he, I guess he was down in the basement. That explains that. All right, so they go back up. Their mom calls him back upstairs. He's going to straighten up down there. And, uh, you know, he knocks over a piece of paneling during the scuffle, and he finds his dad's journal. Bum, bum, bum. So dated a few weeks before, just disappeared at 3 a.m. in pursuit of two perps who knocked over an all-night gas station on the Lower East Side. Sorry, allegedly knocked over. Me and Lori Ratliff follow them down Stanton Street. The idiots cut through an alleyway and start heading back to the streets, but I'm on his tail. But, or I'm on his tail, but good. Almost had him. When they hit an old lady doing some very early morning shopping. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing at that, but that's just the other funny image right there. It just hurt to see it. Mike, forget those slime balls. you got to help this woman. Wrong, Larry. We've got to go after him. Avenger. And make sure they don't hurt anybody else ever again. I wanted their blood bad. Are you seeing parallels to the earlier part of the issue here? No, the entry ends here. What did he do? Stay and help her go after the creeps. Uh, I've got to know it could mean everything to Dirk. And then I uh, guess distracted by his mom, who's uh, just landing on him about everything that they lost and everything. Um, so uh, she basically says, you're no bodyguards, Chris, if you'd like to stay upstate with your aunt, blah, 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 blah. Uh, the madness will end soon, Chris. I've got plans to make sure that little foreshadowing there. So, uh, flash over to Brooklyn in a hidden lab. Uh, I have this lady here getting the vrackle done, screaming, yes, yes, I do possess the power to magnetically manipulate the metal in the world around me. The very iron molecules in these fools' bloodstream. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, yeah. It's a pretty similar power set to Magneto. So, just get that out of the way now. She basically has Magneto's powers. Uh, and this is Lodestone here. We'll find out here in a second. Um, and then she gets... Uh, 
Their power gets shunted off uh, because Phil Basin here has the control device to rein her in. Uh, apparently she has implants in her brain that will make her his servant and her volatile mental state will, will make her most effective for your purpose. Just be very careful. All right, so her name's uh, Andrea. I forget her last name, but it's Lodestone. Ready for her first assignment. That's her outfit. She can control. Um, you just basically got to know that uh, she's going after Grace Powell and Dark Hawk. Uh, she belongs to Phil Basin and has magnetic powers. Uh, and then here we meet Lennox, uh, basically uh, a private eye, as you can tell there. Uh, he's a little over it. kind of reminds me of Harvey Bullock from the Batman animated series. Um, but Grace is basically paying to have him find out what happened to him. She's not getting an honest answer from, honest answer from the cops. And we get an ominous, uh, be careful what you're looking for, lady. You just might find it. And flash forward one whole week later at Midtown High at the gym. Uh, you've got Chris and the Bobster uh, doing some karate. And then all of a sudden Cheryl comes out of nowhere and then hip tosses him over with a wood uh, with the pay attention to the people who care about you. Uh, insinuating that as she brings up here. Oh, so you do you remember my name? Do you remember any other vital statistics about me? Like we've been dating for three whole months, which is a long time. Um, and bottom line, she's pissed that, uh, she hasn't been talking all that much. Um, her and Chris have been talking ever since he found the amulet. Uh, and then headset comes up. You might remember him from the guy earlier that saw, saw Darkhawk buck bust the, the drug deal the week before. Uh, he, uh, headset wants to go, it wants them to come with him to a Mozart festival as part of the bargain. I'm, I can't remember what bargain. Oh, it came to the karate kill last like he agreed to. Uh, Chris says, Cheryl, we do need to talk about things. Let's just meet after dinner at j -Sol's. okay? And she feels good about this. If she feels so good, where's my kiss, women? Oh, you said it, Chris. All right, a few hours later, uh, he's up here in the building monitoring, and he sees the drug dealers at their back, not for long. Uh, and he tells them that moving a block away doesn't account as going away creeps. And you know, I guess he'll buck ahead comment. He's got a little Punisher emblem there on his glasses. Uh, but this time they brought the heavy artillery to take Dark Hawk down. So ensue the fight here. The bazooka goes off, but his shield held up as he states right there. And then Dark Hawk takes off the uh, light pole and whoopang. <laughs> it had to hurt this guy something fierce. Knocks this dude off, probably broke his collarbone, at least concussion. Um, uh, he gets shot at with a uh, semi-automatic here, uh, Wax another one with a foom with the light pole. Uh, Van starts up, heads right towards him, but then he blows it up, also presumably killing this individual in here, but, uh, you know, you don't really see the body, so whatever. Uh, they all seem to be breathing, which is better than they deserve, except for the person in the van. They're probably dead. Well, let's not worry about that. Um, so he looks over uh, back in the change you note know, and the uh, headset, the absent-minded goofball must have been walking home with that blamed classical music blasting. Probably never knew he was in danger. So he listened to classical music so much he missed uh, a superhero fighting off a drug deal in the middle street. So anyways, uh, he, he's hurt, uh, trying to figure out what to do. He may not make it long enough for an ambulance. They never took that first aid course. There's nothing I can do, but he gets the idea to, uh, give him the amulet, have him transform into Dark Hawk and all this stuff. Um, so he changes, tries to get uh, get him to change over to Dark Hawk, but it's not working. It's not working. Why would he change? All I have to do is concentrate, and of course he's unconscious. Can't wish for that change. Um, and so this uh, flashes back to the thoughts he was having earlier in the uh, issue about uh, how he needs to figure out all the Dark Hawk's powers. It's like, okay, get a grip, gotta come up with an alternate, and we get a you Lodestone. There she is, in all of her glory, produce the Dark Hawk or die in his place. Who is she pain unbearable? Lifting him up by his magnets there. Uh, you can't really see the amulet. Uh, uh, so it says headset still has the amulet, but uh, I guess it's underneath his hand there. We're both gonna die. And that's where we leave off for this issue. Dark Hawk number seven. First Lodestone appearance, uh, Darkhawk taking care of some drug dealers, getting some quality time in with Cheryl, presumably. And uh, yeah, we'll see the big fight happens next issue between Darkhawk and Lodestone. So that'll be a good one. So uh, if you guys have any comments or suggestions, feel free to leave them down in the comment box. And as always, my friends, stay dark.